What's the best ES6 feature? Well, recently, 499 developers shared their opinion on what makes ES6 awesome. But what the heck is ES6, and why are people blowing up my community page on YouTube? We're taking a look at the results today, and the video starts right now. This video is brought to you by Freelance Newbie. Start getting paid for your developer skills with the help of this course created by a working freelancer. Visit realtoughcandy.io and get started with your freelancing journey today. What's up, developers? It's Real Tough Candy from RealToughCandy.io, popping on for another video today. I have some interesting survey results I'm going to be sharing with you concerning a little something called ES6. What the heck is ES6, you may ask? Great question. Basically, ES6, aka ECMAScript 2015 or ES2015, is an update to JavaScript. And at the time, it was the first update to the language since 2009. In 2009, we were introduced to ES5. And so six years later, come around the bend of 2015, we have this thing called ES6. And it really started changing how we were working with JavaScript. The bottom line with ES6 is that it makes our developer lives easier. And even though ES6 has been around for five years plus now, we're still seeing some courses and materials being updated to support ES6. For example, the Colt Steel Bootcamp course I reviewed a couple weeks back, that has recently been updated with ES6. Great addition, because this is the more modern way of doing things. And since 2015, we've had yearly releases. So ES6, ES7, ES8, ES9. And so now fast forward to 2020, when we are on ES11. There are little tweaks and upgrades with these releases, but the really big one was ES6. So I asked you developers, what's the best ES6 feature? Drum roll, please. Of 499 voters, 16% said constant let, 15% said promises, 57% said arrow functions, 8% said class keyword, and 3% said something else. Let me dive into these comments because we had some really great additions and people chiming in here. Go Price Go said, I like the template literals feature, no more plus signs. Webdeb Simplified says, we all know it's destructuring and the spread operator. Donovan says, constant let var and global relations when assigning and using vars can get confusing at times. Yomzy Black says, template and object literals. Rudy Hines says destructuring. Matthäus says, since I learned about arrow functions, I refuse to use the function keyword. It feels so much more elegant. Function keyword is for uncivilized barbarians. The one says promises with async await. And then Lolan Joe chiming in saying classes are game changers from prototypes. Arrow functions are nice, but who cares? Some very interesting results. 57%, the majority of respondents said arrow functions are the best feature. Now, if this is all new to you, don't panic. Fortunately, because ES6 has been out for some years now, there are lots of materials to get you up to date. You can start building projects with ES6, you can refactor your ES5, and we even have some excellent GitHub resources like this, simply called ES6 features. So let's see why people are really digging arrow functions. In the arrow section of this repo, it says arrows are function shorthand using the fat arrow syntax. They are syntactically similar to the related feature in C Sharp, Java 8, and copy script. RIP, they support both statement block bodies as well as expression bodies, which return the value of the expression. Unlike functions, arrows share the same lexical this as their surrounding code. Now in this example, we're actually looking at functions. And if you've never seen this syntax before, I remember when I first saw it a few years ago on a tutorial, I was like, what the heck? I don't know what any of this means. The truth is, the more you work with it, the easier it becomes. And eventually it's just, it's non-cerebral. It's a no-brainer. Uh, but here is that fat arrow we we're talking about. This is what makes the magic happen with the function. Notice in this example, you can use an ES6 feature like this fat arrow here, along with the pre-ES6 feature, such as var, and it will still run, assuming your browser supports ES6. Thankfully, the modern versions of major browsers do. In this poll, we also saw some love for constant let along with promises. Going back to this GitHub repo, let's explore this. Let and const block scoped binding constructs 
Let is the new VAR, cons to single assessment, static restrictions prevent use before assignment. And so this person gave a quick example of how let wouldn't work or throw an error because it's already been declared up here. The next one that got some love with 15% is promises. Promises are a library for async programming. Promises are a first class representation of a value that may be made available for the future. Promises are used in many existing JavaScript libraries. We also had an interesting comment down here from the one who said promises used with async await. Nathaniel Daniels replied with, that's where I'm at in this list. Arrow functions are currently in the lead, but I don't use them as much as I expected versus fetching data. And with a meager 8%, but still not a bad showing, the class keyword. And if you've worked with prototypes before directly, you know what a pain in the butt they can be. This just makes things a little easier. I'm actually really surprised more people didn't mention the spread operator. That for me is one of the things that's really improved my efficiency working with JavaScript. Although we did have Web Dev Simplified, shout out to Web Dev Simplified, Kyle over at WDS. We all know it's destructuring and the spread operator. Both of those are super handy and the MDN web docs is an excellent resource for seeing some of these examples in action. Right here, we have the spread syntax. You can actually run these samples right in your browser. So even if the definition doesn't really make sense at first, you can just go down here, study this code and see what they're doing and then run it and then you get that. Go Price Go also had a unique addition. A lot of people agreeing with him here saying the template literals feature, no more plus signs. I actually don't care for template literals. I can never find the freaking backtick key on my keyboard. So I always look really lost. And then I hit the escape key and yeah. <laughs> To recap, the best ES6 feature, 499 votes, 16% said constant lit, 15% said promises, 57% said arrow functions, 8% said class keyword, and 3% said something else. Developers, thanks for participating in this poll. I'm gonna be doing more polls and seeing what developers really think of some of the stuff. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, check out the community box. I'm posting multiple times a week, various interesting topics. So thanks for tuning in. As always, hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. I want to give a shout out to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members for making this video possible. Join the crew at patreon.com forward slash real tough candy or hit the join button beneath this video.